Amen. Awesome. Thank you. That's it. Guys, can you give it up to thank Pastor Rev? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I have a word from the Lord to you guys. And we want you to have the content. If you are in the group, you probably received this content already. And it's a word that the Lord gave us um, a few months ago. And there is this fresh approach in this message. I just want to remind you that the God we worship, we praise, we seek, we come after is the God that created time. That is out of the dimension of time and space. God is not limited to our limitations of time and space. He is the God that created time. And because of that, we can expect an increase of blessings, a time of blessings. Even when things seem not cooperated and head toward that time because of recession, because of election, because of conspiracies, because of so many things going on. But for us, the people of God, we are expecting the God out of time, bring over us the time of blessing. Say a good amen, everybody. Let's pray together. Father, I believe in the word of God that transforms, challenges, boosts our faith, increase our faith, God, and brings us to a new level. Oh, God, of miracles, of experiencing, God, the supernatural in our lives. We believe tonight that the word will make it full work and effective in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amos chapter 9, verse 13 says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper. How's that is even possible? How that a uh, man that is preparing the soil is now being overtaken by the reaper and vice versa. And there's more. And the trader of grapes will overtake him who sows the seed. The process is so fast that the guy that is selling the wine, it's overtaking the guy that is sowing the seed. That's what happens when the God out of time intervenes and come to work. That happened with Joseph. You will all remember the story. Joseph in one night is left in the jail, in the prison. But in a glimpse of a time, he was raised as the second in command in Egypt. How is that even possible? Because the God out of time has released upon Joseph and upon, upon everyone who believes a time of blessings and accelerated blessings. Maybe you are saying, I have been fighting with this enemy for so many years, Pastor. I'm fasting about this matter for so many years. Since I joined Vine Church, I'm praying for this every cycle of fasting. And I don't see things taking place. But tonight I want you to let this negative attitude out of your faith. Because the Lord has decided to expedite process in your life. And I'm telling you, if you never experienced any miracles in your fasting prayer campaigns in the past... You are sitting right now in a chair. There is a very proof that 21 days of fasting prayer really works. Like we remember we are praying for the, uh, what was the name? 21 days of conquer. You guys remember? Conquering. And God gave us, the Lord really gave us in this miraculous way, this amazing building. So I don't know about you, but I am expectant in a supernatural increase of blessings, accelerated blessings in my life. Let me read again Amos chapter 9, verse 13, but now in the message version. This is a paraphrased version written by Eugene Peterson, great theologian. He already passed, but look what he says. He says, yes, indeed, it won't be long now. God's decree, say with me, God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast that your head will swim. No thing fast. One thing fast on the heels of the other. Won't, you won't be able to keep up. Say amen, everybody. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, blessings. Close your eyes. Everywhere you're going to look during these 21 days, you will see Blessings. Blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. I will make everything right again for my people Israel. They will rebuild their ruined cities. They will plant vineyards and drink food 
a good wine. They work their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. I believe we are entering in such a time. The favor you don't deserve is coming and it's called grace. Yes, usually it takes a process to get that position in your workplace. I know that usually it takes a time that your body heals with the medicine you're taking. I know sometimes it takes some time for you to actually get that specific blessings or open doors. But when the God out of time decided to release a time of blessings, everything takes place at once. At once. Now, for that, we must be discerning of time. Now, the Bible says about the tribe of Issachar, a very interesting tribe with a very interesting gift. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles chapter 12 that the tribe of Issachar had the ability to discern the times, to know the times, to understand the times, and made that understanding known for the whole nation of Israel. Tonight, as an Issachar member, I'm telling you, there is a time of blessings coming upon your family, coming upon your ministry, coming upon us as a church. You can't be out of that. You can't miss this opportunity. We know what happened with uh, King David, that because he missed the timing of God, while the kings were meant to be in war, what happened with David? He was relaxing in his house until he saw a beautiful woman, and we know the end of the story. It's a tragedy. David fell in adultery, uh, he committed uh, murder, and actually after that, he started to experience a terrible family curse because of all that tragedy, just because he did not discern the time. But here I am to prophesy the prophecy of Joel chapter 2, verse 25. The Lord out of time is powerful to restore the years that were, that were taken, that were stolen, that were eaten by the swarming locusts. Only the Lord out of time can restore you the feeling, the sense of waste of time. Talking to some brothers here in the church, they were telling me that they feel stuck. Some of them look for an opportunity here in the city for so long, and they feel that they wasted their time even working with that person, even doing such business. But I'm telling you, if you felt like that in the next three weeks, the Lord will expedite, will accelerate blessings in your life because the Lord out of time will restore you all the years wasted. You don't know how it works. We don't need to know how it works. But we need to know that the Lord out of time can control the time in our favor. Because He's the God of acceleration. The Word of God repeatedly says that we must be patient. We need to wait for God's timing. But we also need to discern that we are entering in a new time. At this time, we need to believe that we will experience a quick arrival of the blessings of God. Like I said in the story of Joseph. But also, a great example of Amos chapter 9 is what happened in Cana. When Jesus was in this wedding feast, the wine ran out. And I'm talking on a feast that was supposed to endure 7 to 10 days. Party. Yeah, it's much better than any haves or, you know, this type of festivals that people go. Because it's family festival. Anyways, so in the middle of the festival or the feast... There is no more wine. And we know the story. Uh, Mary comes, Jesus' mother, and says, they have no wine. Do something about it. And Jesus asked them to fill six big jars of water. And at once, water that was supposed to first nurture the soil with the potential buds of vine... And after a couple of years, that vine will sprout some grapes. That after some years, will nurture enough to be a grain and smashed and become into a grape juice. And eventually, that grape juice will ferment and then preserve. And then preserve in bottles in a specific temperature. A process that will take approximately between 15 to 20 years. That's what I learned in Oregon when I visit over there. Now, Jesus 
from water, skipping all the process, turn water into wine. And the same Jesus is here tonight. The same Jesus that wants you, listen to what I'm saying, that wants you to experience a feast in your life. A feast type of lifestyle. He is here tonight. So if this is out of any scientific explanation. No one can actually grasp what happened. And that's a problem when we try to understand the miracles of God. When we try to understand the miracles of God, that means it's not a miracle anymore. I just came out of our financial board meeting. And a brother was wondering, how is that even possible for us to be in this place? It's a miracle. We live in a daily miracle. Every time I hear these kids crying out and, you know, going around from Vine Christian Academy, I know we are in a miracle. And now we have the eight students, full-time students, dedicating their lives to the ministry and to one day become church planters. And you ask me, how does it remember? How does this come from? Like, where did it come from, Pastor? I didn't even notice how it came from. Yeah, we also have a full-time seminary school happening in our, in our church. I don't know how this came to place. All at once, Pastor. All at once, from water to wine. But that's how Jesus does. So don't belittle the power of God. He can accelerate blessings over you. He has super abundant favor and doors that when open will propel you years ahead. Talking uh, to some of my recently graduate students from college. And um, he was sharing to me and some of my uh, college students now graduated. Like they know that the positions they have in the company they work for is not normal. I'm looking to John here. He works remotely. Uh, he just a closed, he just graduated high school, barely graduated high school. He works to a big company. And I wonder, how does this, this guy make such, you know, money and work for this big company? Like, how this is even possible? It's because when God's favor is upon you, things are accelerated. God has allowed you to be pulled back for a while. Maybe like a slingshot. Maybe like a bow, bow and arrow, you felt dragged backwards for a while. But this is only to give you even more strength and power, propulsion forward. The Lord made you an arrow in His hand. He is the mighty archer in Psalm 127. He is the one that is going to thrust you forward in a faster manner. Now, again... It is supernatural. It's not something that we can explain just with normal uh, words or with scientific explanations. Certain things just don't make sense to our natural minds. The things of God are really supernatural. Just believe that this time of blessing is upon us. And another example we wrote down here is what happened with the prophet Elijah. Elijah is this mighty prophet of God. He made uh, fire uh, come down from heaven. He also uh, prophesied a drought. And now it was time for him to prophesy an uh, outpouring of rain. And when he prayed for rain coming from heaven, the Bible says that he saw to the sky, there was only one little cloud at the hand, at the size of a hand of a man. And that was enough. There was enough sign for Elijah to believe an outpouring will come. And as he prophesied that the rain will come, he communicated to King Ahab. And King Ahab was this idolater king that did believe nothing. So King Ahab decided to go to the city in haste. And this is what the Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 46. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. Would you touch somebody else close to you right now? And say with me, the hand of the Lord is on you. Tell somebody else, say, the hand of the Lord is on you. The hand of the Lord was on Elijah. You know what happened with Elijah? 
he was capable to outrun the horses of the king. This is more crazy than Marvel movie. Like he, he actually ran faster than any horse, than any marathonist, anyone that could ever ran. Elijah, with the hand of the Lord upon him, experienced acceleration. Let me read with you guys Jeremiah, prophet Jeremiah, chapter 12, verse 5. Do you have over there, guys? Jeremiah, chapter 12. Verse 5. Would you stand up this night with me? Everybody stand up. Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5. If you race with men on foot and they have weird you, how will you compete with Horses. And if in a safe land you are so trusting, what will you do in the thicket of the Jordan? You know what the Bible is telling us? That the Lord has the same hand upon us. We will outrun the horses. We will outrun the enemy. We're going to outrun the trouble. In this year of acceleration, God will accelerate you and launch you far ahead. What do we need? We need to respond in faith. I'm insisting with this, with my wife and with the pastors in San Francisco. I had a chance to preach to the pastors there, to the group of pastors we are part uh, of a network. And I'm going to say this to you, and I need you to take this to your heart. The only limitation for this acceleration, for the shrink of time, for the explosive blessings coming into your life is our faith alone. We need to believe that the Lord is for us, not against us. The Lord is fighting for us and giving us the spoils already. When we think about it, water turns into wine. That's why we fight in the spirit. That's why we pray, believe in our hearts. Would you guys project for me the goals of prayer? You had received a little card. And with this little card, you're going to find this goal. Tomorrow, I'll give you guys a better uh, version of it. But this suffice for tonight. Tonight, I want to pray specifically for salvation. This side over here. Salvation to take place in your family. Salvation to take place in our life group. Tonight I want to pray for salvation. Believing that the Lord will really expedite the growth of our church. And I know that together with this, the Lord wants to release upon your life blessings. Would you pray with me for the next, let's pray for the next three minutes together. Find somebody else to agree with you. We're going to just pray for salvation. That salvation will take place in our church, in our life groups, in our families, in our workplace. Let's believe together for a time of salvation taking place. And after that, I have a special prayer for you. Join with somebody. Find somebody else to agree with you in prayer. Let me bless. Let's agree together that the Lord is bringing salvation. Salvation. Father, we believe. We believe, Jesus, that this is a time of salvation. This is a time, God, that you will save the lost. You'll find the lost through our lives. Father, I want to pray tonight, especially, God, for those around us, those that are part of our circle of influence. God, you have a time of increase, a time of growth. God, a time of advancement. God, nothing is going to hold us back. Father, you have called us to be proclaimers of the word. God, and see salvation taking place in Fort Myers. Oh, God, I believe, Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus, this is next encounter in September the 30th. We're going to see so many people, God, giving their lives to you. God, I want to prophesy right now. Declare together with the agreement of my brothers 
that we're going to see salvation taking place in this church, God. Oh, like a wave of revival, God, with the lost being found, with the broken being restored, with the oppressed being delivered, God. I believe, Holy Spirit, you have anointing of growth, salvation, salvation, God, for your people, God, salvation through our life groups, salvation through our relationships, salvation as we say, as we serve people, God, as we pour our gifts to the people around us, God. I believe, Holy Spirit, God, that you have for us a time, a season of mighty growth, God, of increase and explosive growth, God, and this includes lost people being found, oh, broken people being restored, the depressed people being set free, Holy Spirit, we want to prophesy tonight, God, that we're going to see salvation taking place, and in September the 30th, God, in this next encounter, oh, this retreat that we're going to make, especially for those that are lost, for those that never heard about the gospel, Father, we believe, God, that we're going to have salvation. We're going to see people, God, being filled with your spirit, completely set free, completely set free by the power of your spirit. Right now, I want to declare together in agreement with my brothers and sisters, God. Oh, it's a time of salvation. It's a time of salvation. Oh, God, people be found with the love of God. Let the gospel prevail. Let the word of God prevail. Let the word of God be established in Fort Myers. God, we believe for all Southwest Florida, Jesus, that you have salvation to make to make it to take place, God. Oh, salvation, bringing lost people in darkness into light. God, we want to prophesy tonight, God. Believing, Lord Jesus, this is the time, Holy Spirit. This is the time for the harvest. This is the time for the harvest. Oh, God, this is the time for the harvest. We believe together. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Would you believe with me? Say amen, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I want you to raise one of your hands. I want to pray a special prayer for you that needs an increase in your finances. I believe that today the Lord is giving us faith to believe in opportunities out of time with no explanation. I believe the Lord is going to arrange in the supernatural realm connections, clients, opportunities. God, we're going to give you bright ideas. God, we're going to give you the right solution for the business. And you're going to be promoted. You're going to receive that raise in your salary. The Lord is declaring upon you. He has decreed upon you. Everything will come to your life at once. Do you guys believe with me? Come on. Raise your hands. Let me bless you, Father. I believe. I believe in an increase of finances upon your people, God. Oh, God, here it is, a people that is generous, a people that is selfless, a people, God, that wants to experience this blessing as a visual, as a tangible testimony to their families and friends, God, that you are a good God. You are a God of abundance. Oh, God, for your children, there is no lack. Father, so I want to bless my brothers and sisters. Oh, Lord Jesus, I believe in an anointing being released in this place, Holy Spirit. Better, better, let's pray better than actually just raising your hands. Would you guys step forward if you are struggling right now in your finances? Would you please take a step forward? Let me lay my hands on you. If you need to have a debt paid, if you need to have an increase in your finances, if you need a miracle in your finances, would you step forward? Let me use this opportunity tonight to pray for you, to pray a specific prayer for you. Come on, step forward. Let's say, have this step of faith to receive. Amen. And you're going to raise your hands as receiving like this. Okay, you're not going to raise your hands like this prophesying. You're going to re re lift your hands like this, receiving. There you go. Everybody that needs a miracle in your finances, let me pray for you right now. Close your eyes. Oh, Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit. God Almighty. God, good God. Your word says, if a child asks his father for a food, for a bread, he won't give him a snake. He won't give him a piece of rock. But a good father knows how to give good gifts to your children. Here it is, your children, Father. Ready to receive. We know, we are aware, we do not deserve. We have no merits in ourselves. But you decided to bless us, Father. 
As we step forward, we are declaring that we believe our resources comes from the Father of lights. It comes from you, God. It doesn't come from man. It doesn't come from the natural resources. As we step forward, we are declaring, God, to the spiritual realm, we believe you, Jesus. We believe you, God. Oh, Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, a God that provides from nowhere, that brings into existence things that did not exist. With your word, God, we have everything we need. We are those that seek the Lord and believe that you exist, that you are, you are the resource, you are the supply, you are the provision. Would you confess this with me? Say with me, I believe my Lord is my provision. My Lord is my need. The Lord prospers me the Lord opens doors to me I believe I increase I believe an increase of blessings in my finances I receive by faith in Jesus name come on let's give a shout of faith to that that I believe and receive hallelujah you guys take your seat now we're gonna give you the Lord's Supper I want you to take the elements in your hands. Pastor T, join me here in the stage, please. Let's make the Lord's communion confession. Let's close this time of prayer standing once again. Get the Lord's communion. I know, I know, this is prayer time, guys. This is fast and prayer. This is not just a normal service. You're not here to be served. You're here to receive your miracle. We're going to make the prayer. Just be, let me just remind you about the power of the Lord's communion. In the next 21 days, we're going to take the Lord's communion every single night. Every single night. And you say, why, Pastor? Why are we going to do this? For many biblical reasons, but I'm going to give you just one. The early church, the church in the book of Acts, their standard meetings happen every single day. And the Bible says that they will be sharing the bread and the cup and the communion every single day. And because of that, it was rare. It was almost extinct among the early church. People that were sick, people that were um, um, with any sort of disease, so if you need also a refreshment in your body, refreshment in your soul, if you need clarity to your mind, it's all here right now. It's all here 